Hey, what's up guys? John here. In this video, I'm going to talk about Jeffrey Epstein and his massive real estate portfolio. It is huge. I'm going to show you his private island, not just the one main island everybody knows about, but his second island. He has two islands. Talk about his mansion in New York City that was once a children's school, believe it or not. That just blows my mind. His massive estate in New Mexico, his place in Paris, place in West Palm Beach, and everything in between. He has accumulated such an impressive real estate portfolio, and to do it under the radar like he's done in it, it's just, I don't see how that's possible. But all that's gonna get exposed in this video. I'm gonna share a lot of information that you won't hear about on a Netflix documentary or through mainstream media or one of these publications. Because I think it's so important to see how the 0.01% live and how they actually do things and who they're connected with and how all that stuff works because the way that they sell how the elite do things versus how they actually do things is very fascinating to me and i think it's important for all of us to know so that being said smash that like button when you do it lets youtube know that you like the content and they'll be more likely to show you business content and content like this more often and i think that the more you know as we step into this big recession the better off you're going to be and drop your comments below. If you have any questions, I'll always respond. And subscribe if you're a new subscriber. Let me know in the comment section. I'll personally welcome you to the page. All right, guys, let's begin. So who is Jeffrey Epstein? Well, a summary, he initially was a teacher, and that teacher turned into a liar, essentially. He lied about his credentials to get a high-flying job in New York City. He used that job title to procure high net worth clients that he could leverage their money to make fees. Well, one of these clients was Les Wexner founder of L Brands, which owns Abercrombie & Fitch, Unlimited, and Victoria's Secret. Think about that for a second. Jeffrey Epstein's mentor owned Victoria's Secret, and that whole brand is built around showcasing young and beautiful women. No one ever put those two things together. It's incredible. He started those three companies with a $5,000 loan from a relative, turned that into a $5 billion company, and Les Wexner is the richest person in Ohio. Well, Les Wexner bought a apartment. It's actually the largest apartment in New York City. It was once a children's school for thir over $13 million. Well, he deeded it over to Epstein. Now let's take a look at this deed. Les Wexner, Epstein's mentor, bought this property for $13.2 million. This was once a children's school and Epstein paid $10 for that. That's right, $10. Take a look at this deed. $13.2 million transaction given to Epstein for $10. We have to really wonder, what is the backroom deal? What's happening that we don't know about? So that property that Epstein paid $10 for was valued at upwards of $77 million only eight years later. The low estimate is $56 million. And you get that asset for a $10 purchase price, there's something going on in the back room. There's something happening here. So what's interesting about Zorro Ranch is that he initially purchased his property with 7,500 acres. So let me put this into context. A football field is 1.32 acres. So it's 7,500 football fields is how big this property is after he expanded it to 10,000 acres. The size of Manhattan is 14,600 acres acres so that being said he is nearly two-thirds the size of manhattan is how big zorro ranch is he wanted to build a landing strip at this property so he could fly in and out and the state said that's fine but we want to come inspect the property inspect the landing strip and he then rescinded his offer he did not want anyone coming to that property he didn't want anyone coming inside or inspecting so he then used a nearby landing strip to keep his privacy. There are many, many rumors of things that go on at that location. However, overall, very private, and that has a lot to do with the rest of his portfolio, his islands, his New York apartment, his place in Paris, everything is built around privacy, and he values that very, very much. Islands, they sit right next to one another. One is Little St. James, and one is Great St. James. Little St. James is the well-known and documented island where he brought his guest. And he purchased that property in 1998 for $7.95 million. 
That property was 78 acres. This island is absolutely sensational. It's located just outside of St. Thomas. So when he's in New York City, he will take a quick flight over to St. Thomas on one of two of his private jets. He has a boat and a helicopter as well. And so I'll fly in and I'll use the helicopter or the boat to transfer guests to and from this island. This apparently was not grand enough. And so then he purchased the property directly next door, Great St. James. Epstein then purchased Great St. James in 2016 for $18 million and his intentions were to develop the property Epstein was issued a stop work order in December for not obeying environmental regulations. According to the New York Post, the stop work order was ignored. Construction on the island continued. And you won't guess who owns the island to the left of the screen, Water Island. Well, that is the Biden family. The Bidens have an island right around the corner from Jeffrey Epstein. It's very interesting, and the whole backstory is fascinating. In 2005, James Biden purchased an acre of land on Water Island for $150,000, quickly secured an easement, and divided it into three roughly equal parcels. Just a year later, he sold one to Green and his wife for $150,000 in what appears to be a nice deal for the Bidens, who retained control of two-thirds of the property. Subsequent tax bills put the assessed value of Green's parcel at around $38,000, until that number jumped to 83700 in 2013. So who is Green? Well, Green's lobbying firm, Lafayette Group, which features a photo of Green with Biden on its website and quotes Biden endorsing Green, earned two government contracts from the Federal Emergency Management Agency worth a total of $5.8 million on April 11, 2010. Three days later, Green extended a $133,000 mortgage to James Biden for his remaining Water Island property, Property records reviewed by Politico show that Green had received full payment and full satisfaction and released the mortgage in September 2013. Joe Biden and his family traveled to Water Island several times during his vice presidency, but did not stay on his brother's or Green's land, which remains undeveloped. This $22 million West Palm Beach mansion just hit the market two weeks ago. It'll be very interesting to see who buys that property for that price, if it sells for that price. There's a lot of controversy around that property. So it'll be interesting to see who would wanna buy that property, especially for a very high figure like that. I'm looking at the comparable homes for sale in that market, and it seems, it seems pretty overpriced, but you will be surprised. Sometimes people will overpay for a piece of property just because it's a trophy from the sense of everyone knows that of that property. For example, the American Horror Story House in Los Angeles. Someone purchased that property, realizing that it was in a TV show, but they did not realize how much fame and notoriety that property actually had. It got so bad to where fans were literally breaking into the house. Now, I'm not saying Epstein has fans, but what I am saying is there will be a lot of people driving by, there will be a lot of people curious about that property, there will be a very limited amount of privacy. and. The American Horror Story house resulted in a lawsuit where the realtors were actually sued because of it. And same thing is same thing happened also in the Michael Jackson house, which is right around the corner from the Playboy Mansion. Property sold for a little over $18 million. And there's nothing except tourists and people taking pictures out front of the gate 24-7. So it'll be very interesting to see how this property holds up for sale. But looking at these images, the property is truly stunning. It's amazing. It's a very interesting time to hit the market with all of what's going on in the world right now to see who's going to fork up the capital and who's going to pay that type of money in these current economic conditions. What's interesting, though, is that with these high-end properties in general, is people look at these trophy assets as a place to kind of get money out of a bank and put it into a property because they know long-term the property is gonna hold its value. So here is his residence in West Palm Beach, 358 El Barillo Way, listed at 21,995, six bedrooms, eight bathrooms, 8,000 square feet, monthly mortgage payment, $105,539 per month. Sits right off of the water, pool, private, looks incredible, looks absolutely beautiful. And the 
Description reads, Beautiful John Bulk, lakefront residence located in prestigious estate section of Elberlo Way, westernly views of Tarpon Island and Everglades Island, staff house, pool house, three-car garage, southern exposure. Just came to the market 11 days ago. So this whole story is just absolutely crazy. How do you lie your way to get around those elite? Like he, he was a teacher. That teacher then got a, a top high-flying job, used that high-flying job to get around Les Wexner, a multi-billionaire. And then on top of all this, that guy is the founder of Victoria's Secret, which is a company specializing in finding young, attractive women, and they advertise them in lingerie. And that guy is the mentor of Jeffrey Epstein. And then Jeffrey Epstein ends up getting a free $70 million house in Manhattan, the largest house in Manhattan. It's incredible. I think Epstein had to have some real, real dirt on Les Wexner for him to, to do that. Something had to have happened there. It's very interesting. It's fascinating. Same thing with Joe Biden. How does Joe Biden get an island? Or maybe it wasn't just Joe Biden. Maybe it was Joe Biden's family. But regardless, it was the connections associated with the Bidens that accumulated that island. It's fascinating as well. You know, I, when I started my real estate career, I met someone. And this story will... It's very relatable to right now. So I started, I was in a training program, and inside this training program, I'm talking to this guy, we really hit it off. He's a couple years older than me, he's a surfer, and he was telling me he's living right outside of Malibu with a celebrity, high, high profile celebrity's daughter. And house is maybe 10,000 square feet overlooking the ocean, just beautiful. I show up there, I've never seen anything like it. They have um, Tahoe right in the driveway, they have full staff, it, everything was just done. We get there, the surfboards are already strapped to the Tahoe. We go down and surf, first time I ever surfed, came back, spent the night. They had chefs prepared all the food. It was just incredible. I've never experienced anything like it. And then the next day, I spent the night. The next day, I go to leave, and he said something to me that I'll never forget. He said, John, it's not who you know that matters. It's who knows you. And it's very, very true, especially at that high level. These people know you and they need something from you, then they're gonna do whatever they can possibly do to please you to try to get a favor. And that favor is obviously gonna be much more desirable than whatever they're doing for you. And it remains true, especially in politics, when you see all these backroom deals and all these people making all this money when their, their fixed salary is very small, but yet at the end of their career, they're worth so much money. It's very, it's just, the whole system is very interesting. And I think that paying attention to Jeffrey Epstein, what's happening there, and what's happening just across uh, the high 0.01% circles is, uh, I think, something we could all learn from. So thank you guys so much for watching. Please smash that like button if you enjoyed the content. It lets YouTube know that you want to see more content. You want to see more content around business and, and things like this to prepare you for the upcoming recession. And drop your comments below and subscribe. If you're a new subscriber, let me know in the comment section. I will personally welcome you to the channel. All right, guys, until next time.